as we prepare to take our dog into this new world of confirmation dog shows, there are a lot of skills that we can teach our dogs that can not only help reduce stress, but can add a lot of convenience to the entire process. One of these behaviors is the chin rest. And if you've been tuned into our channel, you probably saw a recent tutorial video on that topic, which you can check out here. The chin rest is a very versatile behavior. It can be used for things like cooperative care where our dog can opt in to training sessions and it can even make certain things that might cause stress less stressful for our dogs because they can rehearse this behavior that's stationary, calming, and has a huge reinforcement history. Today I want to talk about different ways that you can use the chin rest in a dog show environment to help make your life a little easier. The chin rest behavior is best practiced at home before you take this skill out on the road. But with a little bit of practice under your belt, the dog show experience can be a lot more peaceful for you and your dog with just this simple nifty trick. One way I like to use the chin rest behavior is with my grooming. There are certain grooming practices where you might need to chalk close to a dog's face, you might need to clean eyes or wipe ears, or even do a little bit of fine tuning and grooming close to the face. Sometimes this can be a little frustrating for the dog. And the best thing for this to go smoothly and be done quickly is for the dog to stay still. This is where our chin rest behavior comes into play. By simply allowing your dog to rest their head in your hand, not only is your dog gonna be still and calm, but it'll get this process over with faster. Now, there are certain behaviors that we won't be able to use our chin rest for, like grooming the feet, but there are certain things that we can use it for. The chin rest behavior can also be used around the dog show environment. Dog shows are generally busy and loud and pretty crowded with lots of activity of people and other dogs. Navigating this environment can be challenging. We want our dogs close by and sometimes we might need to hold their head to prevent any grooming from getting messed up before it's their show time. So using the chin rest behavior, we can transition it from a stationary behavior to a moving behavior. This way you can use a moving chin rest as you walk around the show environment to keep your dog's head still and to keep them close by. I also like to use this behavior ringside, whether I'm trying to keep my dog close and prevent interactions from other dogs that I don't want them interacting with, or if I want to lower arousal. The chin rest is a nice calm behavior that keeps them close and can allow them to take a deep breath and focus to calm any ringside nerves before they go in. Just like we use tricks like spin and hand targets to get dogs jazzed up and excited and animated before they go in, that chin rest can be a nice practice to help you and your dog slow down and take a deep breath. The chin rest behavior can also be utilized in the show ring with your dog. If you're going to hand stack your dog, generally we need the head to be held still. By asking your dog for a chin rest, it's gonna keep your dog stationary so that you can use your other free hand to hand stack and place feet where you want them to be. I also like to use the chin rest or a modifier of the chin rest to hold the head and show the bite. With breeds that are down on the ground or maybe even on a ramp, sometimes the judge has to bend over and get in the dog's face in order to see their teeth for the exam. I like to teach the dog to place their head in my hand and then I teach a lift so that the dog then lifts their head up showing their teeth to the judge while I pull the gums back. This is a really nice way to prevent that judge from having to bend over and get in your dog's face and it uses that trusty chin rest to make this process easier and smoother. After the bite we move on to the exam portion. During this, it's essential that your dog stay still. And sometimes if they're nibbling on bait, it can really cause their whole body to move, which not only can be frustrating to some judges, but it also makes it hard for them to really examine your dog because your dog isn't really stationary. By using that chin rest behavior, your dog's head is kept still and the judge can go over your dog and you can reward afterwards. This is a really nice clean way to move through that exam process without food being used 100% of the time. That chin rest behavior has such a high history of reinforcement that simply using it in this moment and training to use it in this moment can also help reduce some of those stresses and negative emotions that your dog might have about the exam. 
You can also use the chin rest behavior if you're waiting inside the ring for a long amount of time. Really large breed rings and group rings can cause you to be in the ring for 15 to 30 minutes. This is a long time for your dog to wait around. And while I certainly like to do tricks like a hand target, spin, take a bow, shake, these behaviors add motion in, which sometimes is really good to keep the dog moving and to keep them animated. But if your dog is struggling with arousal and they're a little too excited about their environment, sometimes we have to focus on behaviors that are calmer. This chin rest can help your dog do it. Chin rest behaviors, hand targets directly in front of the dog's face so they don't have to jump for them, and take a breath are my three go-to skills in this moment to help the dog stay focused and engaged with me, but also calm and stationary. As you can see, there are a lot of applications to this chin rest behavior, navigating the show environment, preparing for the ring and your ring time. Now, in order to get my trusty chin rest behavior to be used in this real world environment, I need to build both distraction and duration. And depending on how I use it, I might need to build this behavior up a little differently. Whenever you need to work on increasing the strength and challenge of a behavior, we always wanna focus on one of the three Ds at a time. When building any behavior, we have distance, distraction, and duration. And in order for us to build our dog's understanding of the chin rest behavior, we need to build those components. Now, initially, when we are building our chin rest behavior, we wanna build it up to about 15 to 20 seconds of duration as a baseline. When we're adding distraction, we wanna make sure that we bring that duration back down to almost zero as we slowly work then on building distraction and duration up together. One way I like to work on this is with a little bit of body handling. With my dog on the table or a ground in front of me, I'll ask my dog to offer their chin rest behavior and with the other hand, I'm gently gonna stroke the back of the dog. The goal is to start in places of their body that are the most comfortable for them. We don't wanna reach for back feet and work on hand stacking if the dog is still uncomfortable with the process of hand stacking. Start easy where your dog is gonna be successful and won't be weirded out by it. So with my dog's head in my hand, I'll take my other hand and gently touch the back, mark the behavior and offer a reward. With each repetition, I can slowly increase how long my hand is petting the dog, where I am touching on the dog, and how long that behavior is going on. The key here is to make sure that your dog is successful, which means we need to build this up in very small approximations. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, touching the back, touching the back and the hips, touching the back, the hips, and the tail, slowly building up to where I could do a full exam on the dog. You wanna make sure that you build this behavior with you as the handler and the person touching the dog before you then ask somebody else to practice. It's best to start with people that your dog knows after some of that excited greeting is already out of the picture. Again, making sure that you're setting your dog up for success. If I wanna use this chin rest behavior as a follow, when I mentioned maybe navigating your show environment, you wanna start with those same small approximations, but this time it's gonna be with movement. You might start simply by asking for the chin rest and turning the dog's head a little bit to the side or a little bit up, mark and reward. Then you might ask for a shifting of weight while your dog's head is in your hand. And finally, moving to one step, two step, three steps, and so on. Again, making sure that whatever your dog's skill level is, you're playing to their strengths. We wanna make sure that each repetition your dog is successful. If at any point you notice that your dog is getting frustrated or not offering their chin rest behavior, which up to this point has been reliable, that's a really good idea to take a break and go back to the drawing table. Do you need to rebuild a little bit of a stronger foundation? Were you making your dog uncomfortable and they said, no, I can't do this chin rest behavior anymore? Or maybe they were confused and I was asking them for too much criteria between those reinforcers. These are some of the things that you might need to analyze with your dog and your training program as you start building this behavior and catering this behavior to how you wanna use it in the real world. 
I really like to use my chin rest behavior to show bite or dentition for my dog before the exam. My hand can stay underneath the chin and I teach that a little bit of release of pressure. To start this, I recommend keeping your hand underneath the chin and moving your hand just slightly so that your dog slightly turns their head side to side or up. Mark and reward this slight release of pressure as your dog moves their face with your hand. With each repetition, you can add just a little bit more movement from them until you can lift that head all the way up. Once you have a full head lift with your chin rest, then you can start to pull the gums back and show bite either the front or full dentition. This way your dog gets used to practicing those two skills together. There are so many ways that we can use this chin rest behavior for our show dogs, from prep at home or before their ring time, on the table with cooperative grooming or bathing, to managing those excited emotions as we deal with arousal levels in a busy environment, and even perfecting your ring routine with being able to hand stack your dog, show bite, and stand still for the exam. What you need to think about are the ways that it makes sense for you and your dog to use this behavior. Think about how much duration your dog is going to need, how many distractions your dog is going to need to be able to manage. And remember that in the beginning when you're building and strengthening this behavior, you need to focus on one of the three Ds at a time, either duration or distraction. When it's time to begin combining them, it's important that you decrease overall criteria for the behavior. So even if I was up to 30 or 45 seconds of duration without anything going on, when I start adding touch back into the picture, I need to make sure that I'm decreasing the overall duration back down to something reasonable like five or six seconds for the dog. This way, your dog can deal with this new criteria of body contact and me putting my hands on them, and they don't have to maintain that high level of duration. This helps set your dog up for success to make sure that they can be successful during this process. I hope this video helps you learn a little bit more about chin rests and how you can use this behavior for your confirmation show dog. And remember, the key about owning a dog and having no cookie cutter solutions is that you get to choose which times and places are best to utilize this behavior for your dog. Just make sure that you're being smart about your training plan. If you need a little extra help managing arousal and excitability that often comes with these busy show environments, I think you'll like this playlist here where we talk about pattern games, which are reliable games that you can play with your dog to help them focus on you and tune out exciting distractions in a way that doesn't cause stress or frustration. If you liked this video, please hit subscribe and like so that we can stay connected and you can stay up to date on all of our training videos. Happy training.